Welcome to Spiritual Psychology. My name is Renee Lavalle McKenna, and I bring my 30 plus years as a recovering addict and ex crazy person turned therapist and shamanic healer to bring you snackable teachings on spirituality, psychology, and all things personal growth. And today I want to talk about the cauldron of relationship. And a cauldron is a large pot used for cooking over an open fire. And the second definition for cauldron, at least in the new Oxford American Dictionary, is a situation characterized by strong emotions and perhaps instability. I love metaphor and the idea that relationships provide nourishment of a particular kind in our life. Some relationships might be like a snack or a coffee break. Some might be junk food that we might fill up on them, but they don't actually offer much value, and we might even feel a little sick or empty after the interactions. Others may be an ongoing buffet, providing a range of delicious and nutritious entrees and desserts to choose from that offers familiarity and novelty at the same time. My ex-husband's family had some money and belonged to this old social club in San Francisco, the Olympic Club. We would go there sometimes for Sunday brunch, get all dressed up. Reminded me of when I was a little kid and we would go out to a special dinner. When I was little, I had this little fake mink stole. It was a little white fur wrap. And we would go to this fancy place, Hugo's in Situate, Massachusetts, and I would get scallops. We'd do that a couple times a year. I always felt so fancy, and it was reminiscent of that to go to the Olympic Club for brunch in a beautiful, sumptuous room with an amazing spread of fabulous food. And my in-laws were and remain wonderful and interesting people, and those brunches were always a really satisfying experience. Kids would get dressed up and get Shirley Temples with their cousins. Extra cherries, please. And I feel very lucky to have a couple of friendships in my life that are like the Olympic Club brunch. Long-term friendships that I've come to treat with special care, gratitude, and reverence. One of them is a 20-year friendship, and the other is over 30 years. And although there have been times in both of those friendships where we might have been disconnected, or at least less connected, at different times we have made a conscious decision to put time, effort, and energy into the friendship because of the value it provides in our lives. And although we could go months or even years without talking, and we'd sit down and pick up where we left off last time, I don't want to have those gaps in those relationships. I don't want to have a life that's too busy to make time or to spend time with the people I deeply love, who love me back. And so those particular friendships are like a soup pot simmering on the stove. There was an old saying, peas porridge hot, peas porridge cold. Peas porridge in the pot, nine days old. And in the days before refrigeration, I understand that many used to keep a soup pot on the stove. And they would just keep adding to it, maybe scraps, extras, leftovers. And so the soup was always continually ready and remaking itself. And kept at a temperature where it didn't spoil. And I wish for each of you friendships and relationships like that in your life that are perpetually available for nourishment, renewal, and sharing. And I'm probably going to kill the cooking metaphor in this episode because it just feels so appropriate when we talk about relationship. Because relationship is a living thing. It changes us, just as cooking changes things. And when we submit ourselves fully into the cauldron of relationship, we are cooked and transformed. And this is a good thing to allow ourselves to be changed. And when you cook meat or vegetables, or combine flour and water to make bread, the individual ingredients are permanently changed. You can't uncook a potato or get the flour back out of a loaf of sourdough bread. I had an interaction with someone recently about sarcasm, and it's actually causing some problems in their life, in their relationships. And they aimed some of the sarcasm on me. And I said, that doesn't feel good. And they said, oh, you know I'm only kidding. And I said, it actually doesn't feel like you're kidding. And they said, oh, well, that's just the way that I am. And that's a lie we tell ourselves. Because I have dedicated my life to change and personal growth of myself and others. 
and life provides infinite opportunities for our own evolution and improvement. And in fact, it is in resisting that very natural flow of life change that most of our suffering exists. And sarcasm, from my perspective, points to an inner cooking pot of anger and suffering that the person's trying to keep a lid on, or they don't want to look into it, and the sarcasm kind of leaks out like a pot bubbling over. Psh! And the fire under any pot may be life circumstances. It could be our own unresolved emotional issues and wounding, our attachments, passions, and desires. And it could be the flame of our own soul, seeking to burn away that that doesn't serve us, seeking to cook and transform us for our own highest good, whether it agrees with our ego or not. And often ego is what needs to be burned away in the cauldron of relationship so that we can be nourished by those soul connections that we all so deeply need. And over time, I have come to see repetitive patterns in my friendships and in my intimate relationships some of which feel really good and healthy, and others are patterns of chronic pain. And whenever there's a pattern in my life, I have a part in it. Hurt me once, shame on you. Hurt me twice, shame on me. Hurt me three times, I better look in that pot. Turn the flame down, add some new ingredients. I do believe if it's working, don't fix it. And if it's not working, then we're being called to grow. And although the heat seems to be much higher on intimate and sexual relationships than it is on friendships, the same rules apply. And I was introduced to the kind of novel idea that each person bears 100% responsibility for their part in the relationship. Now, there's many ways to understand relational dynamics, and certainly there's a give and take. The idea of 50-50 has its place, And I have found it very valuable to assess my relationships from this give and take perspective. I talk about that a little bit more in episode 98, Sacred Contracts, looking at relationships as soul agreements or unconscious, unspoken contracts that we might be able to renegotiate or get out of if necessary. But I find a perspective that each person brings 100% responsibility to the relationship a really empowering approach because it's so easy when there are relational difficulties to blame the other person, to deflect, to justify that our ego wants to see ourself as right and the other person is wrong. I know how yummy that can be to justify and prop up my own position in all the ways that I am right and good and all the ways that the other person is wrong and bad can see all the things that needs to change in them. And if they would only be different, I would be happy. And that is a terribly disempowered place because I am powerless over other people. And when I take 100% responsibility for the relationship, then I am owning that I have chosen to be in relationship with this person. And if their behavior feels harmful to me, that's information about my picker. And we always have three options in any circumstance in our life to accept things the way they are, to ask for change, or to remove ourselves. And sometimes the change we need to ask for is from ourselves. But in the cauldron of relationship, it's usually a call for everyone to change and grow. And sometimes we're called to grow and change together, and sometimes we are called to grow and change apart. And when we do that mindfully and consciously, The relationship can always be infused with love and good wishes for the highest good of everyone involved, even if things turn out differently than we expected. When I got engaged in 2001, I did not expect to be happily divorced in 2022. And I happen to know that my ex-husband is very happy in his new life as well. And I'm really glad because I still have love and good wishes for him. But we completed what we came together to do and began to grow apart. And although we tried like hell, the marriage was no longer nourishing for each of us. It was kind of an empty pot that we had each received tremendous nourishment from that cauldron of that marriage. But the fire could not be relit. And the difficulties in that relationship, as in many of my really powerful relationships, cooked me in very important ways. 
But if I had been able to see the future, and thank God we cannot, I would not have wanted to participate at all. And that 20 plus year relationship was one of the most valuable experiences I've ever had. Personally, professionally, spiritually. And I continue to be informed and benefit from that experience. And if you're in a relationship that feels like a bubbling cauldron right now, I encourage you to look deeply in yourself. My favorite question in relationship is, where am I being called to grow? And if you need the other person to change so that you can be better or different, I really encourage you to be better and different now in the relationship you're in. Because if you're in a relationship pattern, that pattern is yours. And shifting my own personal dynamic within a relationship is what creates lasting, sustainable change. I spend a lot of time looking for the right one. And then I realized the common denominator in all my relationships was me. And that it wasn't about finding the right one. It was about becoming the right one myself. And when I change, my relationships change. When I grow, my relationships grow. When I deepen and submit myself to the fires of the life force and the impermanence of all things, as excruciating as that can be at times, when I can release my attachments to how I think things should be, even what I think I need, I open to God's will or higher consciousness new ways of being that are deeper, more grounded, more fulfilling than what my limited little ego mind can imagine for myself. Relationship is not easy. I don't think it's supposed to be easy. Not all of them, anyway. It's supposed to rub off our rough edges. Might even crack the old cooking pot so the light of our true self can shine through and we might get a bigger container. But the universe has our back, of that I'm sure. And my experience is the more we can show up vulnerably and willingly, then what we most deeply need will be provided for us, often in mysterious ways. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to find out how spiritual psychology might help you in your relational cauldron, learn more about my mentorship program, or participate in some of my upcoming spiritual experience groups, shoot me an email, info at reneemckenna.com. I'm just loving these small groups, four to six people, to support you on your own journey wherever you are at transformative spiritual practice in a supportive, compassionate community of like-minded seekers. If you want a free download of the first chapters of my book, there's a link in the show notes. Thanks as always to my generous supporters on Patreon. Blessings on your path until we meet again. This is Renee LaValle McKenna for Spiritual Psychology.